Hi, Ann Kornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage those of you that have been painting to join us and paint along with us. And today we're gonna to be finishing up our holly. I'm, at least I'm gonna show you the steps to finishing your holly. It probably will take you a couple more fires, but I was concerned that if we didn't do it now and you wanted to do holly for the holiday season, it would be too close. And so I thought uh, I would do it today. Um, so this is what we're, we're gonna be working on. This is what it's gonna look like when we're done, hopefully. Okay, so um, you, you, um, We'll need a couple of colors if you're going to be working on this today. Um, I'm going to show you how to do first a new type of border, one that we haven't done before. This one's so simple, beginners, that you'll love it. It gives you a really professional look. It's easy to do, and it doesn't take any time at all, and it uses things you have right in the house. So, I mean, that's perfect. What more could you ask for? Um... Okay, and for that, we're gonna be using Dalton Green. Now, if you don't have Dalton Green, don't worry about it. Nobody, you know, you don't have to have the same colors I have, as I've said a lot of times. The idea is, though, to find a border that you like that will go with what you're working on. And um, I chose the Dalton Green because I wanted a green border on this, but you don't have to do that. You could do a red border. You will need these colors, though, in order to work along with me, or something close, remember. Uh, so I have here uh, a Dalton Green, and uh, Eloise actually introduced me to the Dalton Green. I hadn't used that before. This is Chartreuse. Um, I have a dark green, and I'm using Persian on the second fire. Then I have Buttercup, but this can be any yellow, just a yellow that doesn't fire out, whatever yellow you have. Um, I'm using Carnation. They do still carry Carnation. I checked this morning. And they have it at Dallas, China, if you want to get carnation. It does not fire. It's a red that does not fire out. That's how good this is. So if you want a red that doesn't fire out, carnation is your red. And it's a true red. Um, I'm also going to be using, if you don't use carnation, you can also use Persian, by the way. I'm using cameo. Now, these are colors that were suggested by Doris Lundy. She's uh, no longer around, but uh, I have a copy of her study. And the colors turn out beautiful. If you don't have this, air blue sometimes will work for you for the same color. If you don't have that, use baby blue. It doesn't matter how close it is. And then shading green. And if you don't have shading green, take a little bit of your black green and mix a little bit of baby blue into it, and it or, and that'll give you kind of a shading green. It, it's basically a dark green with a little blue in it. So that those are the colors we're going to be using. So I'm I'm also going to be using uh, this, which is one of those. Um, little gadgets that you can buy and you put it on your plate and it will help you create a border. So I'm going to be using that. It's a border guide. And I'm also going to be using a turntable because when I'm doing a border, it's always easier to work on a turntable. Um, you can use a Lazy Susan if you have one at home. And just, uh, you might if you want to take some tape and double it up, you know, fold it upon, on itself, or if you have double-sided tape, just to hold your plate in place so it doesn't keep sliding all over, that'll work just as fine. The thing is, you don't really want to hold your plate and try to paint it at the same time, because you're going to end up trying to turn the plate, and you might get your fingers in part of the border. So, all right. So this is my turntable. Let me show you my turntable. It's... Um, it has a, a thing that allows you to, to raise and lower this back part. Um, I actually got it at, a, at an estate sale, so I don't know um, who makes it or where to get it. But um, if you find these, you should really, um, if you can purchase one, buy one. Okay, so we're going to put this up here like this. And we're going to take our pencil. Now, the reason I say pencil is because if you try to use your... Um, pen, the um, Sharpie, it really doesn't fit through these holes very well, so sharpen your pencil. I This is a Stabilo pencil. See, there it is on there. You can see all the writing. Yeah. And uh, I get this at um, one of my um, art stores nearby, Dick Blick. Um, I'm just going to put it in the lowest hole so you can kind of see what it looks like, because I know that will work. As you put the, as you go around the border and you can use this two ways let me show you if you've never seen one before you can use it this way 
or you can flip it over and use it this way. And either way will give you slightly different choices as far as um, your edge. And um, you're going to, as you put your pencil in it, you're going to want to pull towards the middle as you go because you want it to be very straight and you don't want it to move. So I'm pulling towards the middle as I go and I'm turning this. It's not the, not the absolute mo most perfect thing, but you see I have a circle there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use a, this uh, brush. It's a, uh, it's a three-quarter inch brush, and this is a Joyce Burlew brush. Um, I don't know if Joyce Burlew makes her brushes anymore, so if you, know, you want the exact same brush, I don't know that you can find it, but you certainly can get a three-quarter inch brush. That's not a problem, and it still has some paint in it because I was practicing, of course. So um, I'm going to go into my Dalton, and I'm just going to do the edge. This is pretty simple. I start from the center out and just go around. I'll do it this direction. That way you can see what I'm doing. This has a little more of a lip on it than the actual plate that I did the um, holly on. And I've already done this border on the plate we're going to be using for the final fire today because it takes, uh, you have to fire after this step, otherwise you'll end up with your hand in the whole time you're trying to paint. So you just go all the way around, obviously, with this. And I don't think I need to go all the way around, but it'll give you an idea. Here we go. You take whatever color you're using, just go all the way around. And you can go from the middle out. That way, that line in the, uh, in the center kind of stays where it's supposed to be. And just pull all the way to the edge. Then you're going to want to smooth this a little bit, so you're going to go the opposite direction. You can see how that's smoothing it? You're going to feather it when you hold the brush back and just lightly feather it. It doesn't have to be perfect, and that's why it's great for beginners. Here, here I have a lot of lines. Let me turn it this way so you can see. And as I feather it, you see how those lines just sort of disappear? I can hold it up so you can see, too. Isn't that amazing? Going the opposite direction. It's the best way to get, the, get it smooth. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, though, like I said. Because the next step, as you will see, and make sure you come out to the edge. Wherever you miss the edge, just pull it out a little bit. Look at it very carefully at this point. Make sure you've got color everywhere you want it. Okay? All right. Put your brush down and get yourself some saran wrap. You're going to take a piece of saran wrap and you're going to bunch it. But you're going to try to bunch it so that it's like a ball. Kind of like this in your hand. Okay? You're going to hold the edge and you're just going to go around and pat. It's that simple. And try to get an even texture all the way around. If you think there's not enough texture, and right now mine doesn't have a lot of texture, then you can change the ball and put a little more texture on it. Oh, this is much better. The harder you press, the more you'll see the lines and the creases and things. So it just depends what you want to see. The other thing is, the darker you put your green on, the more you'll see. And I don't know that you can really um, see on here what I'm doing, but I wanted to show you how simple the process is. And you just keep turning and going around and doing it until you get exactly the color you want. And if you need to, like here I had, didn't have enough color up near the center, you can just kind of tap with your finger a little more on that spot and it will go right up there for you. So that's my edge. Then I'm going to take and clean off the edge by using, I have a sponge and I'm just gonna run it around the edge 
and that will take anything off the edge. See how much I got off there? And then I'm going to take and find my wedge eraser. Here's my wedge eraser. Um, it's pointed on one end, it has the wedge on the other. And um, you're going to hold the wedge eraser in the middle like this. Um, here, I'll try to hold it way back. See, like this. And you're going to press down. I, I have to be closer to press down, sorry. And you're just going to go around the edge very carefully, pressing down the whole time. I know you really can't see what I'm doing, can you? Wish I were left-handed. It would make it easier. Okay, let me back off of it then here. You're going to press down real hard. See, I can't do it when I'm, I'm making a mess. But you get the idea. You have to hold it down near the bottom. Turn it on its side and really press down. Here, I'm going to bring it up and let's see if I can show you more. You really press down like this and go all the way around the edge. Try not to let up, just keep going. Make sure that you have all the paint. Now see, I did pretty well, I didn't get much paint on there. But make sure you have all the paint up off of that. And that's what you want for a final product. Now, let me show you on this plate, which is the one we're gonna be working on today. I already did it, and you need to fire after that step. And I'm gonna hold it really close. See what texture I got? It's because my paint was darker than what I used on this plate and because I, you know, played with the saran wrap a little so that I got it the way I wanted it. So that just gives you an idea of all the different textures that you can get. Okay. So I will fire this and you could do it before you even started your piece. You could do this first and fire it and then put your holly on. Unfortunately, I had already put my holly on when I decided I wanted a border. And so I did my holly, now I've done the border. And on the final fire, after I'm all done with painting the holly and signing my name, I will take either a pen or a brush and I will go around the edge and just finish off the edge, okay? So that's how you do this border. Now, I'm on my final fire. You can see how light the color came out on here compared to my other one. Now this one I did with the chartreuse and the dark green. The other one I did with um, um, shading green and the dark green. And um, I think I like the colors on this one a little better. Um, so now I'm going to take and finish this and I'm only doing color where I need it. Now, my thought is I'm going to need to fill out, you can see how there's a highlight here, but there's there's no uh, delineation there. Then there's nothing here. So I'm gonna start with the background on this fire, and I'm using a couple of unusual colors. I'm starting out with my yellow. And remember I said I use buttercup? You don't have to use buttercup, but um, I like it. You What you want is a yellow that won't fire out for you. So I'm putting a little buttercup up in here pulling it around. Oops, I need a little more oil. By the way, make sure that when you paint the border on, what you don't want to do is have it too oily or um, it will run and you don't in the kiln and you don't want that. So, okay, I'm putting my yellow here and um, I really think I just want the yellow up at the top a little bit. There we go. The next color I'm gonna use for this background, and this background really turns out pretty, and I think you'll really like it, is um, I'm going to use um, a little bit of shading green. And the shading green I'm putting up here around these leaves that are up here. And I'm just putting it in there. Now it might confuse me a little bit when I go to paint those leaves in, but I am using a little bit of shading green. A little bit down here. And the reason I'm putting the background on first is because I want to be able to put my leaves and things on top and not mess up what I'm doing. You see, I almost have a shadow leaf right there. 
So I, I really, oops, hang on here. There we go. I really like the shadow leaf effect. I'm going to leave that because that, that, a shadow leaf is when you get a little bit of color behind the leaves that is roughly the same color as the leaves or maybe a blue, kind of a shadowy color. In this case, this is shading green, which is kind of a shadowy color. And um, you can actually create um, leaves by pulling this way and this way and then maybe putting a little bit of a point on the end of them if you want. See, like that. And that gives you kind of the leaf effect without it being leaves per se. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of the green and put it down at the bottom too, because I think what I would like is just a, a little bit of the, the green at the bottom just to kind of balance out the green at the top. I know I've got the border, but I want a darker green down here. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to turn it this way because I really don't want it to go back into the border. I want it to come out. Okay. But I'm going right up to the border. Okay. Now I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm going to do something I bet you never thought I would do. I'm actually going to use Cardinal. Well, I'm going to use a blue first. I think I'm going to use the Cameo Blue. And I want the Cameo Blue to give me kind of a a halfway point between the dark green that we have there and the background and you know just kind of a, a pretty color to add to the background just to give it a little a little different color back there so I'm gonna do that there there maybe a little down in here and then I'm going to come and finish a little more in here. Okay, so you can see I have my blue, I have my green, I have my yellow, and a little green in here. This is carnation, and like I said, you can still get carnation. You can get it through Dallas, China, and when you make it, it does not fire out. It's one of the few reds I have found that absolutely does not fire out. And when you use it in a pale, pale color like this, it's stunning. It is stunning. And like I said, I had to do a couple fires on this. And so, like, I still have one more to do after this because I'm going to be um, putting on the, the line on the border. Now, I could do it on this time if I don't think I'll mess stuff up. But I actually ended up doing it on a third, uh, fourth fire because I was kind of afraid of messing things up. And I have to tell you, it never fired out. It, it did not fire, even in its light form like this, it did not fire out. Now it looks a little light, uh, dark on, that, on the screen, I can tell. And I'm pulling the, the darker green into it. It's another one that can stand up uh, by itself pretty well. When you put this in, you get a real pretty kind of a glow and you can mix it with other colors and it stays strong. So, um, okay. Okay, so that's my background so far. Now, it's a little strong for me, the, the cardinal, I mean, carnation. Oh, and I've got a few lines down here, which I really don't want. Let me just... Okay, then you can take your eraser and just gently pat over it to tone it down a little bit if you need to. Because it, it can steal the show. It can get pretty bright. But I like the red and the green. I will also use my eraser to kind of go around and clean up where I went over the edge. That's not going to work. Let's try a Q-tip. That's better. Clean up where I went over the edge. All right. So that's my background. Um, have you ever painted the border a light color and fired and then painted a darker color over and then used the saran wrap? Well, you could. 
No, I've never done that, but I know what you're saying. It's kind of like uh, furniture painters do in um, um, distressing. It's kind of like distressing. And yes, you would get two colors. You would get a lighter and a darker. In fact, let's try it right now, Fran. Let's see what it would look like because we can play with this. That's the reason we have it here. So let me take a little bit of my, here's my dark green. I'm going to paint it over. Let's just see what it would look like. Okay, this is not the best brush because it's a small brush and I like a big brush. Because I never keep whatever I paint when I paint with you guys. It usually ends up, I'm, I'm holding it up too high. Okay, and I'm going to smooth that out like this. Okay, and then we're going to take the saran wrap. Oh, here it is. thought I threw it away. <laughs> and we're going to bunch it up. And you see, sometimes you get it too flat. So what you want to do is make sure you have little bunches so you don't have it flat. You want that. And you're just going to take, here, I'll hold it right up here so you can see. There you go. Oops, hang on, there's a glare on there. Now, I didn't pat it very much. Can you see? There, maybe you can see better there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's very pretty. The light green is underneath and the darker green is on top. If I come closer, ah, uh, that glare, there, there you can see. So there's the difference. Yeah, very pretty. It's a good idea. And it actually makes, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it really makes the saran wrap technique stand out. I do like that very much. I may end up doing that on everything. <laughs> and then you'd have to go through and clean off your edge, clean off the center, and get it all squared away. Okay, now we're going to go back in. I'm using my dark green, and I'm, I'm only going to go where I have to. A little metallic pounce with the saran wrap would also be pretty. Oh, yeah, it would be. It would be. Um, yeah, I have metallics, too. I never thought about that, but yes. Saran wrap is pretty versatile, and for beginners, I think it's a really good option if you want to do a border, and um, you know you're you're just maybe not not the the steadiest painter, or maybe the the best painter, but you want to do a border that looks professional, and I think saran wrap will get you there. Okay, so now I'm going to take this leaf is on top of this one, so I'm starting to add my depth. I'm going to put it down near the bottom. Let me get some on here. The bottom of this here and I'm going to put this leaf oh too dark this leaf you see there this one here under the one that's on top there so I'm going to kind of wipe out a little of that depth that I just put on there so that it shows up a little better and then um, hmm Kind of lost where I, oh, here, here's one under here, and then there's one over here. Yeah. And then there's one up here that's under everything. Nope. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to put a little more depth down here. Just on, now, I'm putting it down here, but I'm just putting it around the berries and on this side. Oops, get it up higher on my brush. There we go. And then I'm also going to take the same dark green and put it down here just to set off those berries really well. Then I will go up in this area and finish off these leaves. I'm just going around the edge. I'm not doing the whole leaf. Up here, this one has to, whoop. I'm going to do a full load of chartreuse and a side load of the green because up here, this is a more of a chartreuse -y color. Now, I'm not worried too much about my little pokes on the ends right now. Um, the reason I'm not is because I think, quite frankly, you can do those with better with a pen than you can um, with the 
um, brush. But you do want to pull them out a little so you know they're there. Full load of chartreuse, side load of the dark green. Now here I have to decide where the heck I can't really tell. I'm looking at my other one. Oh, I see. It comes down like this here, this here, and this here. And then there's this other one down here. Okay. And there's a center right uh, here. That's probably what's missing. And there's a main vein there with a little on the edge and a little on the edge here. So what you want to do is, if your sun is coming this way, you want to put a little dark on the side that's away from the sun so that you know where it, where the leaf ends and also put a little depth in there. I'm doing it here again. And I do want a little bit over here. Okay. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm using mainly the dark green. And I'm going back and I'm hitting these other guys up. Oh. I may need to use a smaller brush. Let me get a better brush here. I'm going to change over to my quarter inch because I like my quarter inch. This is what it looks like. It's a really nice brush, and it's one that has a metal ferrule, that metal down there. So it actually holds its shape a little better. And um, when you're doing the little stuff like this over in here, it's a little easier to control when you have a, a, an edge that's not going to fan out on you like they do sometimes with the, the other ones. Okay. I'm just going back and adding depth. I'm not really enhancing too much of the light and I'm defining the edges of the leaves so like there I got the edge of that leaf a little bit and I'm using my dark green and then over here because it's going to be in the shade and maybe a little oh, right there that didn't turn out quite the way I'd like it to so let me play a little bit here there and I've got one here now you don't have to add perfect things on every one. What you can do is just suggest it. Okay. And then I'm coming over here. This is where, I don't know if you can see, but this guy, the reason he looks so funny is because this is on top and that's the inside of him. I think I can do it like this and you can see it better. I'm going to put the dark on there the way it should be. Turn it around this way and just add it up on top. Well, I have to clean my brush. I've got too much on it. Let's do that again. I'm up on this guy and I'm just going to go and a little at the base and a little at the tip. And then you can kind of go through and wipe this out, wipe that out. Okay, here I'm just putting a little bit on the ends and, oh, too much on there, here. And I really like the way it looks with the, with the green in the background. And here we're just adding color depth only. So I'm putting a little there, then I'll pull over here, and then I'll pull down to the base. And then here, I'm just going to do the spine. Oh, this brush is really too large, <laughs> but I like large brushes. So I'm doing the spine, if you can see. I'm going to pull it right to the end. Once you get the paint on there, you can kind of play with it. And there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm only dipping in the paint, like I said before, I'm dipping in the paint that's down here this part, not up there, because if you paint from the top, you'll get too much paint on your brush and you'll lose all that lovely, um, the lovely chartreuse that we worked so hard to put on last time. So, okay, and here, oh, not enough paint, okay. And here I'm just gonna go like that and that. 
These you can kind of make up on the second fire. And here and here. Okay, so we remember the further away from the main subject, the less focus you need. Okay, now I'm going to take my, I don't have a berry brush, but I do have one of these little rounded brushes, a number four. Okay, and here's Persian. Persian I'm going to put on the darkest parts, so we'll put it on here. This is just to add depth because I already have carnation on here. And here, let me come up so you can see a little better. And here, here, remember the lights up above, the yellow is a dead giveaway. <laughs> and a little here, oh, not enough Persian on there. There we go. A little here. It's still fighting me. Maybe I need a little more oil. If your paint isn't going on dark enough, it's one of two things. Not enough paint, not enough oil. So there, there, there. And then my center one. Okay, and I'm going to mix a little green in. I know you think green, why? It's going to make it gray. And see, it's going to give it a little more depth down near the bottom. It's my dark green, and I'm just kind of adding it here and there just to give it a little more depth. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do is use our pen. And um, I'm going to pick the dark green again because I love the dark green. Can't find my really good... Oh, you know what? Here it is. It hid. I like this, this one. Okay, I'm going to mix up some um, oil to use with my pen. Now, this is my regular mixture that I use. And I'm going to add... This is the Easy Flow, AMP5 Easy Flow. Oops, let me turn it the right way. This is from Dallas. It's a really good ink uh, oil to use to um, thin out your, um, your paint. I put my palette knife in on an angle so I don't fill up the whole palette knife, so I don't get too much too fast. Then I try it, and then I'm gonna do a little more I'm gonna put that over there so I can pick this up and show you. And I mix this in. And then you try to pick it up and see if it'll drip. Well, it will kind of, and maybe I don't have enough on there, but I think I'm okay. I think it's drippy enough. I can see the drip forming. Yep, there it is, okay. And if it drips off the end ever so slowly like that, then you know you've got the right consistency. Make sure you put the cap back on. Um, okay, so I'm going to take my pen. Make sure that you have a good nib on it, or nub, or whatever. you. Some people call it a nib, some people call it a nub. And one thing you will want to do, let me move everything out of the way so I can move my tile over so you can see it a little better. No, you still can't see it. Well, let me show you is you're gonna to wanna to scoop the paint up with the side of your pen, and then you're gonna to wanna to just touch it. Because sometimes, and most of the time, actually, you get a glop on the end, and you don't want the glop on here. So, I'm gonna start with my holly, and I'm gonna give it, I'm not doing everything, and I'm mainly doing, I'm gonna to try to get those little points on there, There we go. I'm gonna to try to get my center. Oh. Try to get my center. Come off of that a little bit. Over here, I'm just gonna make my points a little more. Get a few little, I just am defining a few things. I'm not doing the whole thing. My dad was huge with the pen and ink. He loved pen and ink. He would draw things with pen and ink before he would even paint them and then paint them in. So, okay, now I'm going to sort this guy out here. Just go in with your pen and ink and do it. 
So I kind of finally figured out how that's supposed to look. And then this guy goes up here, over here. We'll give a little, there's the middle guy. Up here, I'm just going to do a little, maybe a little on this side. Finish that out a little. Do a couple of those. Make this a little darker down in here. I'm mainly doing my focal points, which are whatever's in the middle here, not so much the stuff that's around the edge. I'm not doing everything. Make sure you vary which side you put your veins on if you put your veins in. Over here, I think I do need to do a little bit. Now, see where I've got my hand right now? If I had not fired this ahead of time, it'd be a mess right now because I have my hand all over it. So that's why for those of you that were saying that think you can do it all at once, I don't know that you can, but you can try. You might want to just put it on one side of the, um, the, the little vines here or stems just to give it a little bit of, um, and it has to come up in here. Oh, am I up a high up? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> looking at the monitor, not looking at what I'm doing. Okay. There you saw a quick fix with my finger. Ah, yes. Your finger is your best tool. There we go. And then around the berries, I'm going to just do a little bit. Kind of just separate them, but not really wherever the depth is the most. Now, the other thing with your berries, you're gonna to wanna to take a fine brush, like a pointer, and I'm gonna go into my black. Oops, gotta get my paint back over here. Let's take this out of the way. It's driving me crazy. Okay. Oh, I don't have black on here. Okay, we'll use a dark green. You would need a little black, so I'm just gonna put that, maybe one here, maybe one here. Maybe one here. Oops. Sorry, got my brush on there. Okay. Maybe one here. If you have holly in your area, go pull one and you'll know what they look like. But you need those little berries in there. Okay. The final thing you're going to do, you can either use this, which is what I would have done, and... Um, now I do need the uh, this back. I put it on my turntable. I use the oil that I've already mixed for my pen. And I will take and I will, I do it backhand. So I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to see. But I put my, my pen on here and I pull. And pull it around. Or you can do it the other way. You can pull it this way. It Just whatever works for you. And then if it's not quite even, and it might be not quite even, you can take the eraser again and use your eraser and just gently go around the edge. Now, you can see why I wait and do this final detail. On, after I would normally fire this first, then go back and do this. So the order that I would do this plate in is, you start out, you do the holly, or you can do, you can do the border. If you do the border first, that's probably a smart thing to do because then you can decide what you want. But if you do the border first, uh, you don't know what color is gonna be best with your subject. So that's why I painted my holly first, fired it. Then I painted the border, fired it. Then I did the background and the holly here, fired it. And, and you could do a, a second color on here if you wanted to. And then I the last thing I did was with a pen. So you can do it with a pen if you want. And with a pen, it's just gonna, you're just gonna go around. Oh, let me get some ink on there. And if you're a real steady hand, that might be the better for you. 
or you can use a liner. And what you want to do is do the border on there. It's great. You can also use this technique uh, to put on the back of ornaments. You know how it's really hard? Some of the ornaments have um, a lot of open space. You know, like if this were an ornament, you could even put a little border in here. But they have a lot of open space on the back or they're, and you just want to fill it in. And you, and you just want to make it some kind of a, a color, but you think, oh my God, if I paint it, it's going to have strokes and it's going to show right away. So if you use this technique and then go and get your saran wrap or your plastic wrap and just tap it all over the place, it'll really make the ornament look nice on the final fire. Well, pick up those brushes, keep painting. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.